for a hit? No. No, that was work. Oh. Okay. How you feeling? I can't see. Okay. Good evening, everyone. This is the City of Hannibal official council agenda, Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. Council Chamber, 7 p.m. I'd ask the clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Phillips? Here. Council Member Welch? Here. Council Member Beach? Here. Council Member McCoy? Here. Mayor Post Ham Dobson? Here. Council Member Franke? Present. And Mayor Hart? Here. Uh, the audio on out there? Because I don't hear it feeding back. Is this, uh, can you hear this volume right here? Can the back hear this volume? All right. All right. Looks like we'll have to yell louder. We'll have to push. All right. Okay, there being a quorum present, I call this meeting to order. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Dobson, would you do the invocation, please? Sure. Heavenly Father, in our hearts, we plan our course. But we pray that you establish our steps. I pray that we seek you for advice. Let us not make decisions based upon what we know, but let us act based upon your wisdom. Please guide us, Lord. We place this meeting in your hands. We place our hearts and our minds in your hands so that you may direct us. Amen. And I would ask that uh, former council member Jim Van Pist lead us in the pledge this evening as well as a veteran of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, Council, at this time there's need a motion to approve the agenda as it is posted this evening. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion over the agenda items? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion's carried. Now need a motion to approve the minutes. I'm going to try to say all these without getting tongue-tied. Of the regularly scheduled council meeting of April 18th, 2023. The closed session minutes of November 1st, 2022. November 15th, 2022. December 6th, 2022. December 20th, 2022. January 17th, 2023. February 21st, 2023. And lastly, March 7th of 2023. Real quick, before there's a motion, um, I was going through these today, and I noticed a number of errors and omissions. And uh, since they're labeled confidential, I don't necessarily know how to go about talking about that, Mr. City Attorney. Well, if it's open, it's open. If there are some, I mean, Without knowing exactly what you're talking about, uh, it's tough for me, but anything that's that's being moved to an open uh, format shouldn't be any longer be confidential. Okay. Well, I asked because some of them are, I mean, they're marked confidential. Because so. I, I think they were probably stamped that way originally, maybe for their, I don't know, but I would presume for their internal record keeping okay. purposes. Um, they, they were confidential at one point in time, but... My understanding would be anything that's on the list to be released is stuff that is no longer protected by sunshine. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, then, I mean, guys, frankly, I have a lot of uh, edits I would like to make. So, I mean, if you guys want to hear me out right now, so be it. Or we can table and bring back at a different time and if you guys like my uh, fix it then when we can accept it or not. I would personally, if there's several edits that need to be made, I think we should go ahead and confirm that with the clerk, those, those uh, redactions or additions, and be sure the record is correct and then bring it back okay. and discuss. Yeah, I think that's com completely appropriate. I'm just, okay. well, whatever and the rest of the council thinks, I'm And just, open. I mean, to be clear also, I'm not placing any blame on the deputy. She's the deputy doing like three jobs right now. And um, there are like four, seven minutes right here. So, I mean, I couldn't do seven and not make a boo-boo here or there. So just throwing that out there. Right. Um, and some of these go back 
quite a ways. Exactly. I mean, I had to call Charlie up today to confirm some remembrances because they were three, four, or five months ago. Right. So, um, anyways, um, with that, I make a motion to table until the next meeting. And I would second that motion. With the motion and a second, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you for checking those. Next on the agenda is a request to approve payroll and claims for the second half of April 2023. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Motion has a second. Any discussion over payroll and claims? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion's carried. We now have a representative from Hannibal High School. It says Jason Nolan, uh, but that is not the case. Uh, so <clears throat> the representative, please come up, identify yourself, and we'll go from there. <laughs> My name is Jake Grieving. I'm one of the assistant principals at Hannibal High School, stepping in for Mr. Nolan, um, who had to supervise in Clark County tonight for baseball. Um, I'm coming to you just as I have many, many years um, in the past just with a request for barricades to be put up during our commencement ceremony, which is May 25th, and for Brookside to be closed from 6.30 to approximately 8.30, just so we don't have traffic behind our commencement ceremony. So it's a, it's a nice ceremony for our kids. I'm, uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot here just for a little trivia. Sure. Uh, how many do we have graduating this year? 176. <coughs> wow. With I believe 47 graduated in December. Okay. Are they going to walk with their friends? Hmm. Pardon? Are they going to walk with their friends? Those midterm graduates? Yeah. They had their own ceremony in December. Okay. Or excuse me, January. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so this is very similar to what we've had for, well. As long as I've been in administration. The longest I can remember as well, even being in high school, and that's been a few years, so. Um, is there a motion to approve this request? So moved. This should be the insurance for district closure. Yeah, then we'll need that. Second. So motion and a second. Did you get those? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. <clears throat> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Some now, opinion. next on the agenda is resident of 1021 Center, Jeff, and I don't want to try the last name. I'm afraid I'll mess it up. Hard. Sorry? Hard to win. Hard to win. Okay. Thank you very much. I didn't want to butcher <laughs> someone's name and then... That's okay. Where I work, I assist many Hannibal residents a week. In talking with them, I hear two phrases that come up regarding City Hall and the City Council. Number one, politics or business as usual at City Hall. Number two, good old boys network. They don't believe that City Council members, and sometimes those at City Hall, are transparent with them. That's apparent by the lack of citizens here in City Council chambers and watching on YouTube out of a, a city of 17 to 18,000 people. City Council meeting agendas that are posted the Friday before a City Council meeting do not give citizens enough time to review the agenda. I've worked with boards and councils in the past. Typically, agendas are posted 10 days before a meeting and the first item on those agendas is public comment allowing citizens to know and comment about items on the agenda, not making them submit a request to offer comment the day before the agenda is posted and then only having five minutes to offer public comment. At a previous city council meeting, council member McCoy emphasized three times that he allows citizens the opportunity to speak to him about things for half an hour before a city council meeting. That's one hour per month. That's 12 hours in a year. City council members need to get more in touch with the citizens of Hannibal. Have round tables. 
Go to civic events. Visit with them at their homes. Get out and talk to them at public events. That is the only way to help citizens feel like they are part of this city. And together, citizens and the city council can work to build a stronger community. Another thing I hear a lot is that outsiders, people who weren't born in Hannibal and raised in Hannibal, are looked down upon. My wife and I moved here to Hannibal on purpose. We love Hannibal. We love this city. It's full of history. We love this region. It's full of history. We love this state. It's full of history. We moved here from California. We don't want to change Hannibal to be like California. Far from that. We wanted to get away from California. There were many citizens who made Hannibal great and were not born here. Sam Clemens, as you know, born in Florida, Missouri, moved here as a child. His father, John, had a hand in the Hannibal St. Joseph Railroad. Captain William Munger, he owned the home that is now Labina. He moved here from Vermont by way of Illinois. He was a superintendent of Hannibal Lime, served on the city council, and served a term as mayor. Amos Stilwell, he had a mill and a pork packing business. He was the president of the First National Bank of Hannibal. He was from Kentucky. David Dubach, he owned a flour mill and a brickyard, and he was into lumber and was a well-known architect in the Midwest. He was from Indiana. John Oliver Hogg. He was an architect and contractor, and he built many of the homes here in Hannibal. He was from Scotland. And a man whom I revere and know much about, Bob Yap. And as you know, he's on the Hannibal Historic District Board. I think your attitude about people who move to Hannibal needs to change. We are here to work with our fellow citizens, the folks at City Hall and this City Council to build a stronger community. Hopefully, you are willing to work with us. Let me give you an example. At the April 4th City Council meeting, you, Mr. Mayor, thanked a citizen for catching an error with Ordinance 23-002. That was me. I was reviewing the ordinance to see the exact wording. I'm not trying to brag. I want you all to understand how a citizen who moved here can be civic minded and work with council. That should also be apparent <coughs> by the fact that I attend city council meetings. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You, Jeff. Thank you. I got one question before we move on for the city clerk, deputy city clerk, I'm sorry. Um, this is not a loaded question, there's no hidden meaning, it's genuinely out of curiosity. If, I see you smiling over there, if the agenda was to be produced a few days earlier, would that create more work or would it merely shift the work around? Um, it would shift the work around, but it would also require um, a lot by the department heads, um, our city attorney, and things like that. Uh, we do have like schedules, you know, Thursday, at the end, by the end of the day, Thursday is when residents can, the cutoff for residents, Wednesday at the end of the day, and then I of course have to have resolutions and, and ordinances out to council and things like that. So um, it would definitely, it would definitely shift around the work. Could it be done? Yeah, by, by pushing a lot of deadlines for everybody back. And I don't know, you know, a lot of times when we're waiting for bids and maybe Andy and a few others can, department heads can help me here, but if we're waiting for bids to be, you know, opened and things like that, you, you would really um, be pushing back some work uh, that the city was moving forward on by making those deadlines that far ahead. I mean, sometimes, that's just the way it works is, you know, an ordinance will come in, you know, um, on a Tuesday or something like that. So could it be done? Probably. Would it be difficult for the staff and, and department heads and as far as, as 
projects and things like that moving forward, yes. I, I think, like I said, we can have some department heads way in back there, but that would be my, my take on it. Thank you. Mr. City Attorney, yeah, I Missouri just, I, I, I Sunshine have, well, Law requires 24-hour well, notice. Well, but the idea of, of getting the agendas out earlier is probably not a bad idea per se, but I was going to point out also, um, if it's 10, if, it's, if they've got to be out 10 days in advance and you're going to need a couple of two, three day deadline to make sure stuff gets done, then it's going to be really problematic getting, you could talk about stuff at the first meeting and then you wouldn't have time right. to get the work done sure. and get it on the second meeting. So you potentially, if you did that, would be looking at something where it, it would take a full month to address stuff instead of being able to get it on the next council agenda. So while it's it's a good idea in practice, I, I mean, a good idea in theory, I don't know in practice how well 10 days in advance would work. And I mean, if not, this takes my curiosity. I've had similar things before. And, um, I personally think, no disrespect, that 10, 10 days is a bad idea, but um, um, a, a few days might be a good idea. So, just curious, and I appreciate the comments. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is David Ruby, <clears throat> regarding the use of Clemens Field. Good evening, Mr. Ruby. Good evening, Mayor. And my peers, I'm David Ruby. I, uh, Mr. Ruby. Great Sharon, right here in Hannibal. And I guess tonight I'm just after the a little bit of history off the bat. I was born here on the hill, so I've lived here. And I don't know that I can come forward and say it in front of all of you, but I pretty much fought on every corner here. And I'm 47, and it seems like I can't seem to get away from that. So. My only solution to it being is I've coached most of these kids around here and they love to see their coach, Waller. And I got one more left in me and I'd like to really serve it up. In history of our Clemens Field, as a kid, when you'd go by there on Thanksgiving or Christmas even, you'd see football players out there playing football with their dads and their family or softball games for the most part. And then in the summertime, they would take up events. Uh, Wrestling is one of them that they would take up that I enjoyed thoroughly. And they would do it like on TV. So at that time, that was wrestling I knew. And I would love to go down there and I would love to see those things. Um, watching it's been taken away, it's not here. And I know that there's the school and everybody and our youth clubs, we're trying to keep things going here. But I'll be honest, it feels like it's fading. It's not me, it just feels like it's fading. And the only way that I can see that to really, I'm doing my best, buddy. You'll have to just carry with my voice. It's pretty big. Okay. Uh, but the only way I can see that is to lift us up a little bit here. And so I have an opportunity here that I'm going to try to get from you guys to have that Clemens Field. This is a non-alcoholic party, so that's not in my books. This is uh, an actual event. We'll bring in the USA wrestlers, the youth club. We might even bring in some freestyle. We got some guys over there in Vegas. I got some people to talk to. And we could put a fun day together here. Uh, and at the end of the evening, we'll show off some of those boxers and kicks boxers. And in the very end of the evening, I'll crawl up there and I'll shoot one off for you too. Uh, probably be an exhibition match, because I'm not going to be going to get my professional license again. I'm not going to go through all that. But I'll put you on a nice show. And I already have a pretty good little competitor. He's young. He's healthy. He don't do drugs. So he don't drink. So this ought to be quite interesting. I'm going to cough up 20 years to do it. And maybe we can just have some fun with that old field and uh, take it from there. There's a lot behind this. Even if I get your okay tonight, there's still a lot behind this. To put an event together like that, it takes community. It takes some people. This is, I'm a scared feller coming up here in front of me. I'm like, geez, I'm getting myself all into this. But I want it. I want the task. I'm there for the work. I don't stop working anyway, so this is just one of them things we're going to add to the pile for the next three months. Uh, time frame, I'm thinking July. The reason that is because that's National Fight Week. It's also our month of liberty because it no longer gets celebrated for a day. I think we've all pretty much relaxed to the fact that that month is enjoyable. And 
I like to keep it that way. And I like to, these guys got this national fight week going on, so why not join in and try to back it with some stuff? That's pretty much all I got to say, folks. I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I don't, as far as dates are concerned, have there been any conversations with park staff or anything like that yet? Well, we made that attempt, and uh, they seem to be non-responsive. So the next step was to bring it here in front of you guys so we can get a response. Well, I, I appreciate you uh, uh, going through all the steps necessary and having the courage to come in front of council. It, it does take a little bit sometimes, and I get that. Um, I, I personally think it's a good idea if there's some um, staff uh, opposition that I'm unaware of. I don't have to consider that, but um, uh, liability, I, I don't know. But um, using using a space that's not being used is good. So. We can do something with it on that day. And the nice thing about it is we do have the armory. I do not want to go in there because this is an outside, and I want to keep it that way. It's the whole you know, occasion of it all. Kind of the nostalgic Right, right. Feel. I mean, it's great right. winging. I needed to make it down there myself. I have not ever made it down there. I always seem to miss that event. But, Mr. Uh, Ruby, yeah. you're thinking about a half day event, a full day event? No, this will be a full day event because it's going to be. I'm going to be putting myself through a little test here too, folks. So my job is to make it through that day, go through the evening, and capitalize on a, an event. So and, you, and you've uh, you've thought of? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you have, but um, uh, events and or. Uh, you know, competition, what, what, what have you, for the the whole day to keep yes, so to keep uh, this day going, so there's no idle right. So uh, with time. wrestling, we'll be bringing that in as a tournament. So we'll have our youth club, many other youth clubs, and that's kind of how we're going to draw a lot of our customers that day too, because a lot of these, I mean, for the last 20 years, I've coached all these kids up, and across the states, they all know me, they know my kids, they know who I am when I walk in the room. And when we say there's a party going on downtown, they will show up with their kids and their teams, and they will battle for the day. And in that same sense, they'll build their self up for the evening event. And as wrestlers, a lot of them, and as a kid at growing up myself, if I would have had the opportunity as mixed Mars, that's what I am. It's what I love to do. I like to break things, choke them out. I'm sorry to be honest about it, but just who I am. And so if I would have had that opportunity, I would have took it. It was something I would have thoroughly enjoyed doing, and I think most people know that. Well, I'd like, I'd really look forward to your calendar of it. Well, the, I just want to elaborate. The tournament is going to be your draw in the daytime, and it, it only takes us six, seven, eight hours, and then you follow up in the evening time. We'll start in on the box of matches and try to wrap it all up by about nine o'clock when the sun's going down. If I'm going to be the last show, I'd kind of like the sun to be on the west side and just be going down out of my way. I think some of the, uh, you know, you and I have discussed this somewhat in the past. I think some of the issues that have come up was the potential damage to the turf on Clemens Field. I don't know how we can work around that or if there is a way. Uh, but it's council's direction if we want to see if Andy has a way to do this or. We would you recognize Andy and let yeah. him? I'd say I'm, I don't want to speak for Andy. Yeah. <coughs> so, so it's a hard work policy um, that we don't have. We, have, we haven't had a fan down there in 10 years. Okay. Um, after the last concert, um, the field was completely destroyed. Um, we ended up having to come in. The uh, booth came in the year. Best. see a couple of Billy Joel concerts um, both in the outfield of baseball stadiums and um, they're playing baseball on them two days later. I have a feeling that's probably because they have some sort of 
extensive pre-setup and foundation that protects the grass before the event. Is that? They, they also have millions of dollars in the budget. Okay. Um, and they can restock their field. Okay. If, if it's a council budget to do it, I mean, we'll do whatever. Um, but the thing going forward is we can have to say yes to every time. Um, I, in good conscience, think cannot book a There's just no way we can. Um, we can't. I mean, um, if we have a boxing match on there, which is fine. We've had it before, and it stays wet, and the grass is ruined. I can't then have a turnaround on a tournament that's been booked for a year where you got you know, 30 teams come in. So we'll have to be able, we'll have to not be able to do those types of things. But if the council wants it to be more of an event space, that's the council. I, I trust park board and park board policy. Um, is there any way you'd be willing to do something like this at the armory? <coughs> But I do like to talk a little bit more about this grass situation. For one, it's sand. Sand does not pack. I'm an ass water, so got that one covered. So we're not going to be tearing it up. Foremost, you're putting mats out there. And I think everybody's laid a tarp out in their yard here and went back and had stuff and had their fun for the weekend. Maybe it was a water deal, slide down a hill, whatever. We got leaned over grass. We're not setting it there for 48 hours or a week and a half and then peeling them off there. If you come in on a Friday night and everybody's going to sweat their hineys off to put it in that field, come in the next morning and do the deed and be out of there. As far as boxing goes, they'll be up in the arena. As far as wrestling goes, you ain't got chairs out there poking in the dirt. You got feet walking around. I mean, your baseball players do more with the cleats. So, I mean, I'm, I don't want to argue that point because I'm not, I don't really want to be argumentative about it, but I can't really help it because my brain tells me where are we going with that. It is an event center. Technically speaking, that's what I kind of was bringing the history into. It used to be everything went down there. Now, it's not my fault that the people before me decided to lollygag that off and alcohol and drunkenness and foolishness and Terry filled us. We are just we are just a, a serious group of people that take our, our stuff very serious. So we needed a spot that's fun and came to high school football field. I mean, it's good, but it's not really my home spot. However, that field is. I played many rounds of many of things on that field. And so is everybody else around here. So my grass. The policy. That's, it's up to you guys if you guys want to change the policy. I, I didn't write the policy. I'm not familiar with the policy, so I really didn't tell you one or the other. I'm just a citizen that, uh, and a wrestling coach, boxing coach, and a dad that wants to put on an event down there for the kids and start bringing a few things up and let some other guy sit in that stand that's you know, five, six, seven, eight years old. Man, I can't wait one day when I get that chance. I just waited like um, I'm 47, but I started boxing when I was about six years old. So I waited a long time for this opportunity. It's, it's up to them. It's not to me. I understand that. And bring it back to you. I'm sorry. Like, like I said, um, I don't speak for counsel here. You don't have to apologize for getting argumentative. I don't think you are, first of all. I'm not trying to be. Oh, I don't think you are, first of all. Second of all, we do it a lot. Um, more than we should, but it's okay. It's um, discussion. Like I said, I applaud your courage for getting up here. Um, like I said, I don't speak for council, but I trust the park board and the park board policy. I'd love to see this event. If there's another venue for it, um, let me know where I'll be there. Um, but I mean, I've been to wrestling at the Armory before, and I had a lot of fun. So maybe that's an option. Let me so, uh, get off you for wrestling. I get an idea for this, all right? I'm, I'm trying to visualize it too as well and I'm, I'm trying not to belabor this but you know I will give everybody fair shot um, the crowd and spectators would be pretty much limited to the stands right the only thing on the field would be the for lack of better words coaches, photographers, kids. coaches <clears throat> and ring or stage let however. me give you a view let me just give you a view so the way I see this playing out in my head I know is we got the back wall so there's our warm-up spot, okay, to so keep our people away from our people. Out on the field, not directly on top of our dirt, but out in our grass. That's what we go for naturally, to put the, the mats down. So what you're going to see out there is a few people, but they're just going to be walking. There's going to be a few moms try to get out of the stands and come down. That's natural for them to want to do. We're pretty good about running them back up in there. So you're just going to have kids down there having fun. It's a tournament. And they'll get recognized. The part I think you're really worried about, I don't even know so much if it's that grass, is it is the part where I'm sticking the ring up. Okay? So 
if you don't know about a ring, I mean, we're talking post, we're talking flat, we're talking four by eight sheets of plywood drop down there, go on with the knife. And even at that point, you don't have chairs and tables out there. This is what we have that big stand for. It's kind of the, the whole mystique of it for the baseball players and for us. So if we had a building, I mean, I'm working on it. Believe me, I'm over here on Mark Street working my tail off, buying every piece I can buy over here to put us up something to play in. I am trying. I am trying my hiney off. I'm a one-man army walking it down every day. It's a nonstop, seven days a week, 24 hours. And I will get it done. But until then, we need some more to play. I want some more to play. Andy? Why'd you do that? Yeah, so I just need some guidance. Um, I have lawyers. They can work this out with the city manager and the mayor. It's not a problem. It would be, be with me. So or with you, oh, yeah. whoever. Um, we also, right now, we have no restaurants down there for that. The, I call border bodies in for a lot of things, too, so we can handle that. So if you're fine with that, we can move forward on that. I just. I trust Andy and the park's lawyer to make those sorts of decisions. I, I mean, I won. I feel like I might be the only one speaking here, so I'm sorry about that, but that, that's where I am on it. I, I'd be like, uh, convince the park board, go to a park board meeting, convince them, then Andy come back to us. Well, I think we're starting to run short on time. Like I said, this is a July project, and this When's, I can run backwards and forwards. And when's the next meeting, Andy? Park board? Um, I'm sorry. put a plan together and then it's a lot easier to be able to support something where everybody's got a good well, I want good everybody visual. behind it yes. like I said once this goes I mean and I, I'm kind of interested in the evening time I'm kind of I mean, interested in seeing see you old dad get up or this event in the evening there's gonna have to be some police down well, here. well I'm there's interested in seeing things. you get to go back up there and sit on one of the corners like kids 40 years ago. I just tried to before I got here tonight just to make sure I wanted to come in front of the board and uh, everything I seen told me to go ahead and do this. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. When you get with Andy and we'll see where we can get with this. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you for uh, coming up here and having the courage to do that. Getting in the ring will be nothing. I appreciate you guys taking your time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's my understanding the next person on the agenda is unable to attend tonight. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me. April Azate. Okay. So we'll go next on the agenda, Mr. Jim Van Hoos. Couldn't get you to do the invocation tonight, but I got you. You're welcome. It was an honor. Okay. Um, Evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to come speak. Uh, if you remember when I talked at the March 7th meeting, I said that when I had something positive to talk about that I would come back. And I'm back and I hope you take this as positive. Uh, talking about the uh, monthly city manager's report at the last council meeting, there was a statement made that one had been created and had been posted. Uh, so the next day, uh, I went and took a look at it. Uh, it was e easy to find. It was right there uh, on the website. It's uh, pretty comprehensive. If you ask me, it's got a lot of useful information in it that uh, I think the ordinary citizen would uh, be glad to see uh, from different departments. And there's things in here that uh, you don't learn from the council meeting or you don't actually learn from the uh, the website of the uh, of the different departments because uh, I know because I looked it up like some of the information uh, that was provided from the uh, uh, fire department and the police department it's, it's nice you know interesting information but it's not available there and it's not talk, talked about here the city manager's report was the only place uh, that that you see it 
Uh, one thing that I got excited about when I was looking at the uh, Visitors Bureau's uh, portion, that uh, they arranged for uh, LST-325 to come back to Hannibal. I was very excited to see that, uh, being a history buff. And uh, I was down there the last time I was here with my grandkids. They were little wee fellas then, they're in college now, but if I can get them to come back then, I'm gonna to try to duplicate some of the photos that, 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 that we took there. But uh, I appreciate the amount of time and trouble that it took all the different uh, departments to put this together, but I think it's worthwhile, and I, for one, really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing it uh, become a, uh, a regular thing. Okay. So I thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Mr. Hughes. Okay. Next on the agenda is Melissa Cogdell, our Deputy City Clerk. Get your reading going. I know. Um, Mayor, uh, Council, tonight I am going to certify the April elections. Elections were held on April the 4th. Um, as Deputy City Clerk, I do by here certify the following as complete and true copy of the certification of elections held on April the 4th of 2023, as certified to me by the Marion and Rawls County Clerks. Witnessed by my hand and seal of the city, done on the 18th day of April of 2023. Certification of elections for council member for the 5th Ward, Colin Welch, Marion County 220 votes, Rawls County 18 votes, zero write-ins in either counties for a total vote, uh, total votes um, of 238 votes, declaring Colin R. Welch winner of the fifth ward council seat. For six count, uh, six ward council member Jeffrey A. Beach yeah. received a total of 339 votes, zero write-ins. For a total of 339 votes, declaring Jeffrey A. Beach winner of the sixth ward council seat. <laughs> Proposition, Proposition R Shall the citizens of the Hannibal support the city of Hannibal's recycling program by approving a recycling fee of $1.90 per month, set fee to be charged on each utility bill issued by the city of Hannibal, Board of Public Works? for services provided within the city limits of Hannibal, Missouri, with said recycling se uh, services to be provided by a third-party contractor with preference granted to contractors providing meaningful and productive employment for people with disabilities. <clears throat> if adopted, this fee shall continue for a three-year period to begin May 1st, 2023 and expire April the 30th, 2026. Marion County, 1,131 votes. Uh, yes, 300, excuse me, 738 votes no. Rawls County had eight votes for yes and 11 votes for no, showing the total votes of 1,888 for Proposition R for the City of Hannibal. 1,139 yes and 749 no votes, declaring Proposition R having passed by 390 votes. Proposition 1. Shall the City of Hannibal, Missouri impose a citywide sales tax of 3% on all tangible personal property retail <coughs> sales of adult use marijuana sold inside the City of Hannibal, Missouri? Marion County, 1,265 yes votes, 597 no votes. Rawls County, 12 yes votes, 7 no votes. Showing a total vote of 1,881 for Proposition 1 for the City of Hannibal, 1,277 yes votes, 604 no votes, declaring Proposition 1 having passed by 673 votes. Okay. So with that, uh, do you have anything else? Mr. Mayor, real quick, can I add a comment to that? Sure. Thank you. I don't know if I'm breaking protocol here, but um, the recycling center, I don't, I'm sorry that I don't know the official name. Um, what is the official name? Two Rivers Industries. Two Rivers Industries. Um, 
In the past few years, they've done a lot of uh, beautification out there, and also they've done a lot to increase their functionality. And um, even if you don't recycle, um, it's worth going out there just to kind of see what's going on, um, especially if you've been there before. The difference is stark. And furthermore, I want to uh, thank Mr. Dobson for bringing us Proposition 1, and I'm glad it passed. So thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay, so council under my name, I'll go ahead and administer the oath of office for the re-elected 5th and 6th Ward Councilman at this time. Council, at this time I had a appointment up for a second reading this evening, but I would like to, uh, <coughs> for the Historic Development District, I'd like to table that appointment as well as the next appointment uh, for Mr. Yap and Mr. Wickstrom. I'd like to table that to the next meeting with your all's permission and bring this back for a second reading at the next meeting. He's seeking a motion. And seek, oh, yeah. You can okay. say, like, so moved. Second. second. Okay. There's a motion and a second to approve that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you. I'll bring that back. I wanted to have a little more background to give you guys on this. I, I know it's already been voted, but why, why are we tabling? Uh, I'd like to have a little more background to present to the council highlighting the qualifications of these individuals oh of the individuals yes yes okay. i wasn't able to get everything i wanted and in all fairness i want the people to know the people that i are that i am appointing to these boards their qualifications excellent good good okay and 
not sure how this is on here, but the next item somehow under my name is a renewal for professional service contract with James Lemon Law Firm, LLC. There's a resolution 2454-23 to follow. I am under the impression that that contract has been disseminated through the council and you've had time to mm -hmm. review this. And so that resolution to follow will outline the details of that contract. And that's everything under my name. Uh, I do see that there's a item under the city manager's name. Uh, obviously the city manager's on FMLA this evening. And there is a second reading of the Planning and Zoning Commission. I don't think it's incumbent that that be done this evening as well. I hope that in two weeks you will be back and be able to present that item yourself. So I need a motion to uh, table this item under her name. One or both, Mr. Mayor. I'm there's, sorry. There's two. It looks like there's two items. There's two. One or both of them. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let's table both of those till the next meeting, so that she can present those on her <coughs> own accord. I, I'm fine with that. I'm curious. Uh, when she's been out in the past, we've done her items. Yeah. I'm just. I curious. just wasn't. I just wasn't prepared to present her okay. her items this evening. Motion and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, Maria Coons, Hannibal Regional Economic Development Council. Good evening. Um, I'm Maria Coons. I think I know a lot of you, but I work at um, Hannibal Regional Economic Development Council as the entrepreneurship specialist, um, and I run the Small Business Development Center there. Um, I am uh, filling in on some other um, things right now. So uh, in the past, Corey Mahaffey had come to you guys and um, discussed a community improvement district. Um, and I was actually looking at the initial scope of work, and this started back in May 2021, uh, three days before I started. So um, this has uh, been a labor of love, but I just wanted to update you guys on where we're at with the proposed community improvement district. Uh, you can see the map for the proposed boundaries here, and I'll be here after council if um, those in the audience would like to look at it. Um, but we have, um, we have come to near completion of the petition um, that will now go to the property owners to be signed. So that's why I'm here tonight. So we will formally present that petition um, on May 15th um, at the Mark Twain Museum Gallery um, at 6 p.m. So if you guys are interested, uh, we'd love to have you come out and support that. Um, so within that petition, uh, we will have um, the proposed board members um, the boundaries, both laid out in script and, and the map um, for people to review and, um, and share that. Um, so a little bit of background, because I know that it's been a while since we've had a discussion about the Community Improvement District. Um, community Improvement Districts are a tool given to us um, by the state of Missouri to um, create a separate political subdivision so that we have a source of revenue for improvements with the goal of reversing property tax decline. So um, within this proposed district, um, we would create a separate political subdivision governed by a board um, that would then uh, use the revenues to um, do various kinds of improvements. I get a lot of questions, what do those improvements look like? It's really dependent upon um, what the board hears and decides to um, use that money for. Um, but it can be a number of things. It can be infrastructure improvements. It can be um, helping, you know, fund positions to run the events that we have um, throughout the district. It can be uh, way signage. It can be promotion. It can be a lot of different things. Um, so um, that is um, kind of what the SID will do. Uh, just to share a little bit about how it's established. Um, it is a democratic process, so this um, petition that we've put together, we bring uh, to the property owners, and they then um, have the uh, they have the option to sign a, the petition. Um, 
for this to go to council, to city council, to be established, we have to have 51% of um, both per capita and assessed value property owners. So um, it, we do need a majority, just like anything else um, democratic. So uh, that's our next step. That's why we're having this public meeting is um, to seek, uh, seek those signatures. So uh, also at that public meeting, we'll have our uh, tax impact statement. So um, how this district is funded is by, um, after establishing that SID, we will actually take uh, all of the property tax revenue, the real property tax revenue, um, from within that district and retain it and pull it into that um, fund. So um, we will have a tax impact statement that shows you know, what amount of tax revenue uh, this is going to generate. Um, and then additionally, um, I'm getting further down the line, but just so you're aware, um, if the SID is established, um, we will um, take a vote to the, um, the actual uh, people that live within the district, um, the residents of that district, not the property owners, about an additional 1% sales tax to um, pile, like basically add another revenue stream for that said district to make improvements. Um, so that's pretty much it. I will. Um, I would love to hear your questions, um, provide answers, um, but in case you're wondering, um, we have, you know, the working group that has been working on the SID uh, has um, laid out proposed board members. Um, we have seven right now. Uh, most of them are, um, they're um, position specific, so they're not necessarily held by a person, but by the person within that position. So um, the position specific um, Board seats would be the city manager, so Lisa Peck, um, HRADC director or president, so Hal Benedict, um, the second ward councilman, so uh, Mike Dobson, uh, the chamber of commerce director, uh, Mackenzie Disselhorst, the uh, historic Hannibal marketing council president, who at this point is uh, Katie Welch, um, and then a representative from the Hannibal Downtown Redevelopment Corporation, um, which uh, Andy Dorian is a board member for and will represent um, on, on the SID board. And then our seventh is an at-large property owner, uh, and we took that to the Historic Hannibal Marketing Council to see who they felt was a good um, potential uh, seventh board member, and they um, recommended Joe Noonan. Um, so he will be, um, he is the proposed seventh member. So with that, I'd like um, to take your questions uh, and definitely invite you to our meeting on May 15th at 6 p.m. Yes, Maria. Uh, Maria. I'm, uh, I'm a bit unclear. Maybe you could clarify on the 15th, you're going to uh, offer a petition. Mm -hmm. and, and is it at that point that you're looking for the majority, the 51? Yeah, as soon as we present and, that. And what's the... And what's the uh, time frame on that um, my understanding is we don't there is no time frame it's however long it takes us to get the 51 percent um, so basically that hearing will open up the door for signatures so we will um, one thing to know about the signatures is they do have to be notarized um, and so we will have notaries there that night but then um, you know we can continue to hold public hearings until we reach that 51 or we can do you know um, the Proposed board can go out and do one-on-ones and see who's interested and, and uh, get signatures that way. Okay, open-ended. Yeah, um, and just so you're aware, there's um, roughly 250 <coughs> parcels within the proposed district that runs um, down Mark Twain um, on Main and 3rd Street and then back up Broadway. There's around 250 parcels and um, that doesn't, so if you thought half of that, that'd be about 125. But um, some of those parcels are owned by like the same person. So, um, you know, we don't, I'm not going to say 125 is the exact number of signatures we'll need, um, but it will be roughly amount, around that amount. Hmm. I have a few questions. Um, first of all, thank you for presenting. I know it's outside of the normal purview of your responsibility, so it's super appreciated on that note. Anytime. Um, the, and sorry for. Felt like I was drinking from the water hose a little bit there, um, with a fire hydrant rather. Um, so you said 51% of, of, of what? So uh, properties? two criteria have to be met um, because they don't want it to skew. So it has to be both um, assessed value and per capita. 
So if each of you owned a property, but Daryl's properties were um, assessed higher, we would still have to have four of you. So it just evens it out between actual value um, and then also per so you capita. Have to meet both of those thresholds. Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, how, sorry. Um, no, you're how fine. do how do if a I'm sorry for getting in the weeds here, but no, it's okay. I just no comment sometimes. Um, the if a business is owned by a company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's very common. A lot of people hold their um, yeah. A lot of people hold their property in an LLC or or something. Um, then we just have to have the uh, designated legal signer for that. So whether it's the owner or if they let us know that there's someone else who can legally sign, um, we do that. That is something that might come up. I know that you know there are properties that are in this district that are owned um, outside of state or something like that, uh, and so. Uh, our strategy is to kind of leave those for last and hope we get that 51%. Um, and then eventually, you know, if we need to do that, we can begin contacting and stuff like that. Those, um, the property owners have been mailed a letter about the May 15th meeting. Um, if you didn't, I mean, um, you know, if for some reason you didn't get the piece of mail, uh, you know, you are obviously invited. You don't have to be a property owner to come to the meeting. Um, you are more than welcome to attend it as, it is open, so. And then, um, uh, oh, yeah, so then once you achieve the 51% of the total property owners and the assessed value, is the SID just in existence then? It'll actually come to you all, um, to city council, and you guys will uh, then vote to establish it. Okay, and then at that point, you will go for the 1% sales tax to the residents, the inhabitants of the district. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so I get a lot of, um, people get a little confused because they um, get jumbled on who is supposed to do the signatures and who's supposed to do the vote. Um, but if you think about it, uh, the property owners are who are going to have their um, real property taxes. Um, it They're actually going to have a zero net change. They're not having to pay more, but it's affecting their property taxes. So they sign the petition, but then the residences, residents are who are probably, you know, in theory going to be impacted by sales tax, so they do the vote. But um, yeah, this is a pretty long, drawn out process, um, but you know, we try to take it step by step. Uh, I just want you guys to be aware of everything coming down the pipeline. Thank you, very clear answers. Just one clarification, and for the public mainly, I already know, but the 1% proper, or 1% sales tax, if approved, is only for the businesses that would operate within the community improvement district. Yes, you're exactly right. Um, this is, so whenever we create this separate political subdivision, like a port or a levy district or whatever, it's very similar, um, it becomes its own thing and uh, the county would then only collect that additional 1% for the properties um, within the district, so. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if you guys are curious, I um, did a little research today, and uh, SIDs are actually very common in the state. Uh, you can go on the Department of Revenue website and find a list of all the, the SIDs um, throughout the state of Missouri um, in case you're interested in more information. Maria, do you have a tax number yet? For so <laughs> I, uh, our legal is probably going to... Um, so we, we found out that the... Um, Marion County had reassessed taxes since our last, uh, since they last sent them to us. Um, but s speaking from February 10th numbers, um, and you know this is this is nothing official. Um, we have um, the February 10th numbers said that there's about between three and 3.5 million dollars in assessed property value um, that'll be within that SID. And then um, you know if you're curious. Um, Marion County has the different tax levy rates, so um, you know we can you can do that math if you'd like. But um, our legal counsel will actually put together a formal document that lays out um, what that tax situation will look like, um, and we will uh, have to do a public hearing um, for those taxing jurisdictions. Um, so that that is something that will be happening um, very soon as well. Um, you will have that statement on the fifteenth, though. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, th thank you so much, and uh, 
I'll stick around with my big, huge map if anybody has any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> Mike Murphy, building inspector. Mayor, council. Um, so David Snyder came into the office. He uh, submitted a request to vacate a portion of Choteau Street over on South Side. Um, this went through plan and zoning, no objections there. So just requesting a public hearing on June 6th to council to carry on with that. Okay. Is there a motion to set the public hearing? So moved. Second. Thank you. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carrying. Thank you, Mayor. You, you can uh, reflect that, please. Next, Andy Dorian, Director of Central Services. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Good evening, um, Andy. We've got one item tonight. It's just our annual bid award for our street materials. Um, the only thing that's um, different is we had no bids for the aggregates. I think something got lost in the mail. So we're back out for bid for that. Um, usually it's only one bidder. Um, so we should bring that back. Hopefully next council meeting, our first meeting in June. Um, everything else is kind of pretty much similar um, with um, snow removal salt. We always uh, pick two firms. Um, same thing with asphalt and concrete. If we usually go to the lower one first, but if they're not making, I think it leaves us the option of going to the second. So right. Can answer any questions? Are you seeing a uh, very much of an increase over previous years? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, asphalt, um, not so much asphalt that spiked last year. Okay. And so it's about where it was last year. So that was good, a good sign. Um, everything else is up a little bit. So. All right. Motion to accept the bids. So moved. There's a motion to accept. Is that a second? A second. Okay. Motion and a second on the floor. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Andy. Next on the agenda, Mr. Charles Phillips and Stefan Franke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know who was going. For. Here we go. All right. Thank you. For the seventh time in seven meetings, we're asking the council to update the ordinance to require a, a monthly manager's, city manager's report uh, to our citizens and business in our public council meetings. As members of the city council, we work for our citizens who elect us. Our citizens would be better able to offer feedback on our performance if they perceived a monthly update on the happenings in the city government, which uh, has been brought forth at this very council by those very citizens. A better informed city council would result in an even more effective working relationship with the city manager in achieving the goals that we as a council ought to be setting uh, for the city in response to the feedback from the citizens. Such reports are commonplace, best practice in governments, businesses, uh, in Hannibal and across the world. The city manager used to report, uh, used to produce said reports on a somewhat monthly basis. Um, until February of 2022, and we don't, we don't know why they stopped. Uh, we're grateful to see that a new report was posted on the City of Hannibal's website uh, for March of 2023. In a recent Facebook post, Mayor Pro Tem Dobson asked what could be more transparent than posting the report on a website. And our answer is the same as it has been for the last seven consecutive meetings update the ordinance to require a monthly report from the city manager to the city council and to the citizens for whom we serve in our open and public council meetings. And a first reading will follow. Thank you. Great. Um, <clears throat> attached to this memo, we went ahead and included the report that was posted on the website. Um, and I was gonna highlight some of the things that I was pleased with and that I liked, but um, Mr. Van Hoos kind of did that for us already. Yes. So it's appreciated. Thank you. Um, it's a good opportunity to toot our horn, toot our own horn, and more specifically to uh, recognize our employees who deserve it. So, anyways, uh, we got another memo after that one. 
So, oh, yeah. we're done with that topic? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm so, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, so that'll be Bill 23-010 to follow. Okay. Proceed, sir. I'm sorry. Great. Didn't interrupt you. Uh, we have another one. Uh, we're looking for an update, and Charlie and I wrote this, which is why I'm using we. We would like an update on City Council's October 18th, 2022 directive to staff to update the towing ordinances to establish the proper protocol for which towing company is called when one is needed. On that date, representatives from various local towing companies came to council to express their concern over what they perceived to be quote unquote unfair towing practices. The example used to illustrate their frustration was when a volunteer firefighter called Heartland Towing onto the scene of an accident when it was Scott's minor collision and towing's turn in the rotation. After hearing their concerns, council decided to address the towing situation when we voted to, quote unquote, uh, to form a committee including the city attorney, the city manager, police and fire chief to draft an ordinance and return back to council in a month, end quote. In a recent post on Facebook, a public forum, City Council person and Mayor Pro Tem Mike Dobson explained the following, open quote, as far as the tow ordinance, the city attorney drafted an ordinance and sent it to each of the tow companies for comments. It's my understanding that many objected to some of the fees and the minimum insurance requirements and thought it might be best to leave well enough alone, end quote. This post raises more questions than it answers. Setting aside the question as to how City Council person and Mayor Pro Tem Dobson was aware of this information and who made the decision to, quote unquote, leave well enough alone, we believe it is inappropriate for any City Council person or the Mayor to share such decisions on social media before a decision has even been made by Council. Given that Council was not notified of the status or advised by staff of the concerns about the draft ordinance, we agree, we disagree that it would quote unquote, be best to leave well enough alone. The decision as to how to address these concerns of the towing companies contacted, contracted should be a decision of the full council after being fully briefed by staff. Oh. Mr. Franke, did you say the mayor commented on social media as well? No, Mayor Pro Tim. Okay, sorry okay, because I, all right, well, it ran together and I was like, I don't recall because uh, as I made it abundantly clear that night, you, you stayed I, out of it. I stay out of it. My wet, my name is Wes. I'm not in that mess, except that I do work there at one of the towing companies. It's no secret. I mean, it's, uh, however, I I maintain that uh, I do not get involved in this and have tried to be completely hands off, up to and including not even following up to see where this has went over the last few months because I didn't feel it'd be appropriate for me to stick my nose in it. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm staying pretty much You know, you and I there. Uh, disagree sometimes, argue sometimes, might not like each other sometimes, but to your credit, you do stay out of this one publicly, so. Okay, I just w want to make sure. All right. I, I guess at this point, we should ask the uh, city attorney uh, where we stand. Um. Mr. Lennon? Generally, yes. I'm sorry. I can't hear it. I can't it's hear it. I'll, I'll lean back and I'll, I was I was looking at the person that asked me the question, but I'll lean back and talk a little louder. Uh, so basically, here's the deal. Uh, nobody was happy with the ordinances drafted. Um, we resubmitted to the committee to see what their opinions were, and we need to have. Think some follow-up I think that's even loud I think it's going uh, faster. we need to have some follow-up <laughs> input some of the uh, uh, complaints we, we felt were well founded in things that we had not understood about the tow business because no one on the committee owns or works or runs a tow company well, that's a lot better uh, so as a result, some of some of those comments we went ahead 
and made some changes, which I resubmitted to the committee, as I recall, and we need to have another meeting. But our other problem was that the city manager is on FMLA leave, so we have not been able to reschedule that, but we do need to have another meeting. Now, in, in regards to a, a decision to abandon, I, I think that might be an overstatement. I, I would say that there might be some frustration that people felt maybe that's what was going on, but uh, I, it, it's not abandoned. I think it's a it's an issue that we need to deal with. You know, we need to figure out what's going to be fair, and, and I'll I'll tell you, we're not going to be able to make everybody happy because there are enough differences in opinions regarding some things, and, and not to get too far into the weeds, but there's some things like classifications of heavy toe, standard toe, some things like that, and there are some disagreements regarding how that's classified. And we've done some additional research to try to figure out where our standards way off is one one tow company in particular felt we were way off on on the sizes etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, one of the other tow companies didn't really have a concern about it the third tow company said yeah i think you're okay but there's some issues like that that we probably need to deal with and we need to push it forward but there's been no abandonment and quite frankly we didn't bring it back to the council because <coughs> There was no point in bringing to you all something that the tow companies were not remotely satisfied with because uh, our understanding of your directive was figure out what's going on with the tow companies before you bring it back to us. So that's kind of where we are. Thank you, James. And I um, want to make sure you understand I'm not coming after you here. Um, at the end of the day, the city manager was the highest ranking employee on that committee. Therefore, it's her responsibility. I, I, I don't I don't think it'd be fair to, to put it on, on Lisa. If 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 you're gonna put it on somebody, it probably ought to be me because I, I, I and I just want to be fair and say I took the lead on the committee and arranged the meetings, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm the one that hasn't rescheduled a meeting. Now again, it it, it has kind of slipped by the wayside because of some other things going on. But but to be fair, I, I took the lead on scheduling stuff. Yeah, and I understand and you know agree to disagree because uh, I think well, not Harry Truman's buck stops here, uh, famous Missourian, and uh, I understand the city manager's not well right now. We wish her the best, and uh, that wasn't my issue. My issue is, um, you know, you're not the elected official. Mr. Dobson is here sitting next to me, and I mean, I want to know who made this decision to leave well enough alone. That's what's happened so far is we've left well enough alone. And I was asked to to read the letter that came from Mr. Lemons, and uh, with multiple complaints about uh, different points in the letter. So that's conflicting with what he just said. He said it. So amazing. who handles these events? Is it like NECOM, like nine one one? No. No. <clears throat> that that that's one of mi one of of many issues. You know that there are there are multiple issues. There there's an issue with the tow rotation. There's an issue with what the <clears throat> process is for people that tow directly for the city, uh, abandoned vehicles, things like that. There is an issue with do we keep one tow list or multiple tow lists because there are issues with some tow companies have the ability to tow just passenger vehicles <clears throat> others would have absolutely no ability to tow something large like semi a fire truck something like that so the the proposal is as we came up with which was based on I think city of Springfield but maybe several others was to divide it into two levels of standard tow and a heavy duty tow and one of the tow companies felt like we were way off on, on what constituted a heavy duty, that, that that was incorrect. We were trying to seek some additional information. Uh, we didn't necessarily lay our hands on something like that. I mean, here's the thing. I, I could bring it to you guys as it is right now, but I'll tell you that the tow companies are not going to be satisfied with that. And we probably need to come back around and, and have another meeting uh, and talk about are we going to tweak these things before we bring it to you? 
are we in a position where we just think it needs to be left as is? Um, and again, we have. <coughs> Good enough. I mean, just to be clear, when we when we I mean, whatever the minute says, when we asked you guys to do it in a month, I kind of chuckled myself a little bit because I knew that wasn't going to happen. Speed of government, whatever. Um, you know, like I said, though, my concern is that. You said it wasn't abandoned, but you just doubled down on that there was a decision made to leave well enough alone. So no, I said, well, it's left well enough alone for right now. So you misspoke? I, are we, are we, have we adopted anything? Well, Mr. So we've left well enough alone. My thing is, you communicated to the public that there is a decision made to leave well enough alone, which I think anybody here would read as to not pursue this. So, I mean, I didn't make that decision. I mean, I don't think anybody else here made that No, decision. nobody so, has, so it's left well enough alone for right now. To tell you the truth, it seems like you got caught holding the bag and <laughs> you don't know what to say. Are you familiar with Robbins v. Becker, Mr. City Attorney? No. No? I, I'm sorry, what is it? Well, that's, that's the uh, lawsuit that uh, took the highway patrol out of uh, tow rotation. Yes, okay. okay. Then yes, I am familiar with that lawsuit. Okay. And that's what I suggested to happen here, because now you're going to set up a two-pronged system of tow rotations that our chief's going to have to be responsible for, and he's going to mess up one day, and then one of the tow companies is going to sue the city, and then we're going to be up here trying to defend that. So, wait, you just avoided answering my question by taking issue with the proposed ordinances? I answered your question. Okay. So... Somebody somewhere who's been unspecified made a decision to not pursue this. Didn't say that. I said it's as is for now. That's not what you said. Um, but okay. I mean, I guess someday um, maybe we'll all be fortunate enough to know who made that decision. Um, until then, you know, James, I appreciate the update. Chief, are we not carrying on as as we have in the past? So not a bit, basically, nothing's changed. So again, I would urge the council to look at, you know, dropping the rotation list as it has the state done. Okay, so it does seem like a decision was made and it was made by you to no, drop it because that's no, what No, that's want. what I'm suggesting. Uh, and, <laughs> but that's in direct contradiction with council's October 18th directive to tell staff to come back with an order. We, we talked so about it, we talked about it then, and I got overspoken every time I brought it up. But you cast a vote in affirmative to do that. Are you changing your vote? No. Frankly, you should have voted no. that night, but I mean, that's another story. Okay, no answers for us. Thank you. I'm done. Let's read some bills for uh, the purposes of uh, meeting decorum. I'll insert myself just for a second. Uh, Meetings will be set up by yourself with the parties aforementioned that we'll be working uh, on this again to come Mayor, up with yes. something. Uh, the com I collected comments. Some were in writing. Some were verbal. I shared those comments with the committee. We discussed the need to have a follow-up meeting before we brought anything to the council. Uh, <clears throat> and quite frankly, we have not had that meeting yet. Okay. And actually, no, I'm not done. Sorry. Um, yeah, I hear it. It's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Um, I just want to make clear you keep the testing that the decision no, was made. No, I'll go back. Me, I'll I'm go speaking. back and edit my. Excuse me, I'm speaking. Like I got Excuse spoken me, over speaking. that Excuse last me, meeting. Thank you. Um, so, in a public forum, it was said that a decision was made to leave well enough alone. He attests that that happened, and it was a collective we who did that. It's just not I, true. I, I will edit my Facebook post to say, you know, for now. That's because, not true. Because nothing's changed. That's still not nothing's true. Nothing's changed. We the chief just said nothing's changed. 
When did we, we make that we decision? We didn't make the decision. When did we take a vote to leave well enough alone? We haven't. Thank you. Can we read some business? What does anything oh. happen? Hey, well, let's yeah, move on. Actually. Let's so, move on uh, with some business. No, nothing's happened. Okay. No, nothing's yeah, happened as far as the total is. The chief just attested to that. I still don't see the relevance, but thank you. I will say <clears throat> this, this doesn't really have to do with <coughs> co rotations or anything like that. But in dealing with situations such as this, at one time I had a uh, boss tell me to go out and poll the troops of what color police cars they wanted and what decals they wanted. And they were given two options. 50% of the people were happy and 50% of the people were ticked off. Uh, it would have been better if the chief had just made a decision and they'd been mad at him and everybody got along. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't envy you on this project because there are multiple uh, prongs to it and personalities to deal with. Uh, good I wish the committee best. <laughs> True. So with that. Uh, we will go ahead and set everything on this since you brought up Mr. Frankie. I'm, I'm good to move on. Thank you, sir. You're good to move on? Sure. Yes, sir. All right. So we have before us now bill number 23-010. I need a motion to have the clerk of this bill a first reading. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Councilman Phillips? Yes. Councilman Welch? Yes. Councilman Beach? No. Councilman McCoy? No. Mayor Pro Tem Dobson? No. Councilman Franke? Yes. And Mayor Hark? No. Three, four, okay. All right, we now have before us resolution 2454-23. I need a motion to have the clerk read this resolution and call the roll for adoption. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I do a little bit. And sorry that this seems out of left field. Appreciate James. I like James a lot, actually. Um, very similar sense of humor. Um, like him he's lot. been the city attorney for a long time. I appreciate the work he does. Um, that being said, he's been the city attorney for such a long time. I think it might be useful to see what other prices out there for the work, for the bidding process. Um, he's, of course, welcome to reapply, and he'd probably have my vote when he did. And I would say the chances of him getting again are astronomically high. Um, but that's my thoughts. I know we've already had a motion and a second on the floor in this discussion on potentially doing something else, but throwing it out there. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Oh. <clears throat> Resolution number 2454-23. A resolution authorizing the mayor to sign a professional service contract with the Lemon Law Firm, LLC, to provide services as city attorney and city prosecutor. Councilman Phillips? Abstain. Councilman Welch? Yes. Councilman Beach? Yes. Councilman McCoy? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Dobson? Yes. Councilman Franke? Nope. And Mayor Hart? Yes. Five one. Okay, I declare resolution 2454-2223, duly approved and adopted on this day. Oh, were you able to discuss this closed session item? I saw that you put three in the However, I think for the topic of covering, uh, 13 is overkill anyway. So while you can't amend it, I believe that you're okay to go ahead and go in closed session because you have personnel. The main person.
personnel thing that I want to cover it anyway. I usually throw 13 in just in case someone wants to argue that I cover some individual topic. This topic is such that I believe we're okay without the 13. And you can maintain the uh, conversation to stick to those. Correct. Okay. Okay, so therefore I'm got a request to go into closed session in accordance with RSMO 610.021, paragraph 1 and 3, admitting myself, counsel, city attorney, deputy city clerk, list here, Andy Dorian. Should be everyone at this point. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Councilman Phillips? Yes. Councilman Welch? Yes. Councilman Beach? Yes. Councilman McCoy? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Dobson? Yes. Councilman Franke? Yes. And Mayor Hart? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending this evening. Jim, thank you, sir. Thank you.